Oh, mm. really fabulous. Super! <laughs> I understand you've been out rock and rolling with someone who's a Jerry Lee Lewis and an Elvis Presley all rolled into one. Well, that's right, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get this sort of hairstyle to match, but I didn't quite have enough on top no. for the big quiff. <laughs> but uh, you wait till you see Dave Taylor's quiff in a minute. This guy is out to prove that rock and roll will never die. Have a look at this. Listen to me now When I get home You're never there I have myself Some cold beer Hear a knock At my front door Very coming drunk For on the floor Stop Stop with this messing around You never listened before You better listen to me now And roll it extraordinaire. Welcome to the Fizzbiz studio. Thank you. First Thank of you all, much. amazing performance. How long did it take you to learn how to do all the sort of backward well, headstand stuff? I don't know, about uh, sort of after 15 years, it comes and goes, you know. Good, great. How, how long have you been uh, doing rock? Has it always been something you wanted to do since a kid? Or, or? Yeah, yeah. I left school about 14 years old and went straight onto the road yeah. doing it. Who, who were your sort of idols at, at that stage? Well, in those days, it was Bill Haley. Yeah. And of course, Elvis. Elvis, Bill Haley. I never really went for the other rock and rolls, but mm. but uh, Bill Haley was my idol. Yeah, uh, it's been a, a long road for you, in fact, hasn't it? I mean, even to get to where you are today, mm. uh, uh, started as a rally assembly worker, yes. assembling bicycles, right? Yes, and after that, I was making biscuits. <laughs> making biscuits. <laughs> Slightly different to the life of a rock and roller. It, yeah. yeah, so how did you get in, in, involved with being on the road and all that sort of thing? Well, I don't know. I started playing in various bands around Nottingham, where I was born, and uh, eventually I, I joined a, a quite a, what I would call a famous band. It's not a famous band, but it was to me, hmm. called the Hellraisers in, in London. It was the first professional band. You know, we actually got paid. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. uh, quite, a, quite a novelty at that time. But, um, and from there on, it's just become like a, a carrying on doing things, you know, it's yeah. great. You were with Matchbox as well, who had a couple of number ones in England. Well, I wasn't with them at the time. Uh, just before they had the hits, I was in Finland. Mm. I, I moved over to Finland for my own band. Mm. What, was... what took you there? Well, I went over there just for a month for a tour and uh, stayed five years. 
Good grief, really. Is there a very strong rock and roll following in Finland? There was. It was a, there was a period there where it was nothing but rock and roll. Mm. The radio on the TV in the streets. Everything was rock and roll. Mm. It was fantastic. It, you've, you've played in a, a, a enormous amount of countries. Um, mm. Italy, Spain, Portugal, most of Europe, right? Mm. And uh, Poland, all sorts of places. I'll you? be going to Poland, yeah. You're going to Poland, I'm Going right? to Poland in August. Well, which place do you think, uh, which place other than England do you reckon has the biggest sort of rock and roll following? Well, I would say uh, Europe is, is very good. Holland, mm. Germany, it's very good. Finland, of course, was was brilliant for rock and roll, but it's changed nowadays. But uh, um, I, I guess Europe is, is about the best. Mm. Now, Dave, how would you describe the act? Um, rock and roll will never die, right? But right. It, it has become a, a novelty act now. Would you would you yeah. say? Yeah, it's. Um, yeah, I suppose it is in a way. Yeah. Mm. Do you think that's what what mainly uh, attracts people, or do you think the people who become a, a really dedicated rock and roll fans? Well, you've got two audiences. You've got the people who remember rock and roll and who enjoy it, and you've got the new people who've never seen rock and roll and they've never seen or even heard of Elvis Presley nowadays. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the new kids, they don't even know who Bill Haley was. Mm. And so it's a totally new market for them. Yeah. So if you get an audience like that, what, what I guess your, your stage show just holds it up and from... Well, you just uh, carry on, and they, they just think it's, uh, well, you know, for the young people, they think it's a new, a new type of music. So yeah. it's, it's, to them, it's just pop music, which I mean, is how, good. How about your reaction here in Hong Kong? Because you were here, actually, what, a couple of years back? Uh, and six months ago. Six months ago. <laughs> Short a little bit. <laughs> six months ago, then you come back again, right? Yeah. So, uh, so the sort of audience must be pretty good here in town? Oh, yeah, the audience is great. Um, it's good fun. It's, it's a different audience, uh, because... It's more of the, the middle-class, middle-aged people mm. in Hong Kong that I, I play to, the audiences. Not, not so much the kids. Mm. Have you travelled around any other places in Asia? Um, only if, well, I went to Japan, but I didn't play there. Yeah. In the Philippines. And, uh, Japan but, must uh, be quite a mile. Japan is very good, I know, for rock and roll. It's brilliant, but I've never played there. Mm. Is that one of your sort of next port of calls? I hope so, yeah. Mm. I certainly hope so. So how much longer are you going to be sticking around Hong Kong, Dick? Um... I leave next Saturday in five days' time, mm -hmm. and I hope to be coming back in December. Mm. And uh, I hope to be going to Thailand. I've got some work coming up in Thailand and Singapore. Yeah. So that should be a, quite a nice place. Great. Well, all the best of luck to you, Dave. And uh, your act is fabulous. Thanks. I just love that piano. <laughs> Thank great you. Great stuff. Now, what we have actually is um, we have some autographed copies of Dave's uh, latest EP here, which has got four. Uh, great songs, including the one which we showed you just now. And uh, Dave, this one's gone pretty big in Poland, right? Sold them. Yes, just um, just that... gone ten thousand in Poland. Yeah, so that's that's why you're off to Poland. That's right? why. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, all the best there. Now, if you would like to win one of um, one of Dave's EPs, all right, all you have to do is answer these two extremely difficult questions. We would like to know: A, where was Elvis born? And B. What was his surname? That's going to be the difficult one. So now, if you think you know those two and you'd like to win a copy of Dave Taylor's uh, EP, autographed, I might add as well, then drop us a line here to Fisbiz at room 430, 81 Broadcast Drive, Kowloon Tong. And uh, do make sure you get your letters to us before Tuesday of next week. Well, that's it for part one of uh, Fisbiz. I'd like to thank Dave Taylor for coming along. Thank you very much thank indeed, you. Dave. And uh, we'll see you soon. See you soon. Also, we'll see you in a minute for part two of Fisbiz. Oh, my God.